All right, hello. This is Neonism. I'm here to uh, explain some stuff and some things too. Today we're going to be going over my metallic template. I'm going to be going with the Ford today because the blue looks very nice. No particular reason. The Chevy and the Toyota are also available. Everything's ready to go and Everything you see in the Ford here today will be uh, as identical as you could imagine, except for the car is going to be switched out. So you can follow along uh, with your car's preferred template or your preferred car's template, or you can check this out and uh, kind of see what all I have built into this template because the metallic is just the start. So when you open up the toolkit, this is the first thing you're going to see. A nice little welcome screen. Go ahead and turn that off. And now you're starting to see some things that are more familiar. Though things look quite more, quite more different. So let's get some things out of the way. Wireframe, of course, still there, just as you'd expect. Collapse that down, leave some space. And let's start from the bottom here and just work our way up. More exciting things towards the top here. So base color, nothing too crazy there. Um, I guess I should mention that I will not be doing any specific design in this and I will not be talking about how to create spec maps. I will be going over how spec mapping functions with this template and how to achieve certain things with it. However, I will not be telling you, oh, do this, this is makes this texture, this makes that texture. Um, I will be explaining things, how I do them, how I was taught how to do them years ago when I learned PBR texturing, um, which is all black and white. Uh, if you don't know the black and white values, I highly recommend Googling phys physically based rendered textures or PBR textures and investigating what those values are and what they look like. Uh, so if you came here to look for how to spec map, you're not going to find that here. This is going over some very particular things with this toolkit that I built. Anyway, base color, that's going to be, you know, whatever. Uh, moving up, design, full color, main. That's going to be where most of your design lives. Uh, it's above the base color, but below everything else, of course. Above that, you'll have your sponsors. And then above that, the number. Um, number and sponsors never really overlap unless you have, you know, text as part of your design. Um, so that's just, you know, there to keep order. And inside of some of these folders, I have little tool tips for you. Um, this one's slightly off from what you're probably looking at because every single one of these has some explanation in it. Uh, but just a few directions. You can delete those if need be, or you can use them as bookmarks, uh, however you prefer to do it. So moving out of, well, here we start talking about the spec map stuff. So the way I have this built is partially how I design my cars. Um, all the stuff in yellow is full color or albedo, diffuse, whichever term you prefer to use. Um, I always label my files as A for albedo, because again, that was the phrasing I was taught. Um, so you have your albedo color here, and then above that in the green is the spec map components. So design spec map base texture. I have a couple kind of common textures in here. And these are invertible. Actually, we'll get to that later. So just a standard chrome, standard metallic, and a basic matte. And again, reflecting the albedo group. Uh, design for spec main, sponsors for spec, and numbers for spec. 
uh, these two groups are basically going to be mirrored. Um, you can build the black and white uh, first and then do the colors. That's how we usually make textures is by making the texture first and then adding the color later. But let's collapse that down because things will get interesting here. Let's actually turn that off and full color. There we go. So next up is the metallic highlights. This is where things start to get interesting. You'll notice the stack is a little bit different. Your purple layers, <clears throat> the ambient occlusion and the metallics, those are kind of the big main show here. Um, the reason there are two and not just one like in previous versions of metallic layers is because these things are doing different things. So if you turn off the ambient occlusion, you'll notice a bunch of stuff fades away. When you have the metallic activated, the ambient occlusion is going to enhance that metallic effect. Now, it may not necessarily be ambient occlusion in the typical sense, but I wanted to keep the phrasing to what I know, and it's close enough to what it's trying to be, because not every car is going to be fully metallic like this. You know it, I know it. With the way spec maps are and how people can use them now, there's no reason that every car should be completely metallic all over the place. You know, in the past, that's kind of the only option we had to add a visual enhancement to the car. But with spec maps now, it's a lot more open to, you know, this spot is metallic, that little slice is chrome, and then all that's matte sort of thing. So with that being said, maybe you want to turn the metallic off. But then what about those extra little enhancements? Well... The ambient occlusion is taking care of that because the ambient occlusion is smooth. Whereas the metallic highlights have this noisy effect to them to elicit the metallic look, the ambient occlusion is smooth the way light bounces and how shadows work. So if you want to do a matte car, just leave the ambient occlusion on and turn on your matte textures. Now you can leave, you know, the AO and the metallic on or off while doing spec maps. That's another option you have. Um, you know, you can turn on and off whatever layers you want here and just have a grand old time. I'm not your boss. <laughs> I'm just giving you tips here. This is also kind of a different tool from what I think most things have come out. I know uh, Colby's I yeah Colby's Eye Paints, uh, Heatwave Designs. Oh, that's the old name. <laughs> uh, Heatwave Designs has some awesome smart templates, and I'm sure some of you creative guys could figure out a way to integrate the stuff with his stuff. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so you got your design here. We want the metallics and the aiming occlusion. <clears throat> What's all this other stuff in the middle? Well, stamped decals are a lot of the stamped decals. And most of those are either locked away that you don't or can't edit. Um, and then the other ones are available for you to edit as you like. So you can change your spoiler, good your logo color, roll bar, rip and piece, uh, and the pipboard. That's all there and already labeled for you. So you don't need to kind of guess where things are at. I wanted to make this as user-friendly as possible. <clears throat> Have some spec map options built in for your spoiler here. And then spec map components for everything else as well. Now the last part is really fun. 
I think this might be the first time this has been put into anything for iRacing. But these are the tire marks. And these, I think, are very fun. Of course, I have the Albedo and the spec map for it. So you don't need to worry about uh, if you can spec map the tire marks. You definitely can. They're all right there for you. You just need to turn on the corresponding names. And we have some fun names. The Dale, Shake and Bake. There's the Dale. There's Shake and Bake. Here's the Comeback. Love Tap, right side. Just the top. The old skirt scuff, you can kind of see it down there. Quarter panel takedown and quarter panel revenge. So we turn all those on and get a real short track look. Good stuff. Actual pixels here. Quite a bit of detail in that. And with a forward number now, you can get some real cool stuff there. And let's see. Next up, I would probably say is the spec map group. So you see having some instructions on here. Turn on the green, turn off the yellow, save as a PNG. So you essentially go through here. Turn on all the green stuff, turn off the yellow, then save out this image as a PNG. Say this is what we want. We want a matte car with uh, some chrome accents. We can do that. So you'd save this out as a PNG, and then you'd place that new PNG here. Then what you would do is take that same PNG put it down here in the roughness channel and simply invert it. <clears throat> and you would get those uh, textures as they are labeled down here. Chrome metallic and matte. You would also be able to do this with any of the textures that I created for the sim uh, via the uh, various texture groups that I have put out. Uh, those can be, when you do make black and white textures, they can be completely inverted for just like the most extreme look, uh, depending on where on the grayscale you put things. But they don't have to be. Uh, you can make this, you know, black and then make this like, you know, a medium gray instead of white and get a wide range of other textures that way. Uh, that's how I got my. Uh, the roof numbers with the holographic, those are all very different numbers. But yeah, that is the long and short of my texture kit here. I hope it answered some questions, and I can't wait to see what you make with it. See you guys later.